Pokemon Ultimate Adventures by Mike Azuki. Meanwhile, hello, what have we here? asked Ash as the whole group stood in an alleyway. Team Rocket Agents? What are they doing here? asked Misty, poking her head out of the alley and looking out into the streets. Standing out there in the open were Jesse, James, and Meowth of Team Rocket. More than that, accompanying them were Agents Cassidy and Butch, along with about a dozen masked grunts. Probably the same thing we are, wiping out the Missingno gang, said Ebby. Rumor has it that Team Rocket's been going around busting up all sorts of gang and criminal organizations, and by the looks of it, the rumor's true. What, so you're saying Team Rocket's gone into crime fighting? asked Brock. Of course not, answered Ebby. No, they never act unless something was in it for them. The way they do things is after beating whatever enemy they have, they make offers to join Team Rocket and are usually successful because Team Rocket can offer more than any gang or organization could. If anything, it's almost like they're trying to stamp out the competition while getting as many recruits as possible. Why they're doing it, I have no idea. Shh! They're moving in! Ash raised his hand, and they all stopped talking. All the rockets moved out of sight, leaving only Cassidy and Butch standing guard. If what you say is true, then that means this is the Missing No Gang hideout. Heh! <laughs> Why'd we have to get stuck guarding an entrance while those two clowns and their cat get to go in and take out the gang? Butch spat. Because somehow, they've been getting stronger, Cassidy answered bitterly. I don't get it! The moment they become just a little less useless, they all of a sudden get all the good assignments. To make matters worse, the boss is gonna choose someone to be the next 001. If either of them gets that title, we'll never live it down. Ah! They both screamed when an explosion sent them flying and hitting their heads. The two of them lay down, out cold. Whoa, these things are powerful, Ash gasped, holding his quicksilver arm out. Wearing it on his arm, he was able to fire a nitro ball and send them flying. It was certainly a powerful weapon. Let's go! Location, Missingno Gang HQ. I knew the Missingno Gang was strong, but I didn't think it would be this big, Ash gasped as they hid behind a bunch of crates. Poison Sting! Jesse yelled. Arbok opened his mouth and fired hundreds of poison needles, taking down the enemy hero. Toxic Attack! James yelled. Weezing released a poisonous sludge, poisoning the Flareon, followed by a takedown attack. Ha! Hya! Meowth jumped left and right, slashing across Hitmonlee's and Machamp's faces, taking both of them down. Ha <laughs> ha! Meowth looked up at his next opponent, which would prove to be a better challenge. A Dragonite? And what would a rare Pokemon like you be doing in a dump like this? Meow! Meowth screamed jumping up to Dragonite's face and attacking wildly. Before long, Dragonite collapsed to the ground, defeated. <laughs> There's too many of them! James growled. The three of them were leading a group of Team Rocket grunts in the fight against the Missingno. The three of them were doing surprisingly well, but Giovanni obviously must have underestimated the size and strength of the game because Team Rocket was outnumbered by more than a hundred, and one agent after another went down against them. Which side are we rooting for? asked Brock. I think we want Team Rocket to win, answered Evie. Then shouldn't we get in there and help them? asked Misty. No, we have to wait, said Evie. If we go in, both sides will attack us. We have to let them fight it out, and wait for both forces to thin- ah! Everyone jumped up in surprise when this stack of crates suddenly went crashing down, making a lot of noise, not to mention completely blowing their cover. Sorry, Ebby, but waiting just isn't my style, said Ash, standing with his leg out. Apparently, he was the one who had kicked the stack and made it crash. I'm going in right now! Putting on the Quicksilver, he immediately ran into battle. Finally! I was getting bored of waiting! Misty pulled out her mallet, as well as her Pokeballs, and followed Ash. Ah! Those idiots! They've ruined the strategy! 
Abby punched the crates. Hey, we're still here. Brock and Tracy stood behind him. About the strategy? Whatever. Just go and fight. Not like either of you have much use anyway. Especially now that Ash pretty much does all the fighting himself. You're just extra baggage that holds the AAML. Abby muttered. Well, excuse me! Jerk. The two of them grumbled as they walked into battle. I might as well leave. If I stay here, I'll only be a burden. Ebby sighed, wishing he could fight as well. Good luck, Ash. I have faith in you, he said, leaving the building. He wasn't wishing Ash luck in winning the battle, no. He knew Ash could win easily. What he was referring to was the power of one. HA! Ash shouted as he charged through the masses of missing no gang members, smashing everyone who stood in his way and sending them flying in different directions. Pokeball, go! He shouted, releasing his entire team. Vine Whip! Fire Spin! Hydro Thunder! Ash shouted, and his Pokemon fired their attacks, wiping out a number of both Team Rockets and the Messino Gang's Pokemon. Hmm! Ash then whipped out a handful of Nitro Balls in his hands. Ha! He threw them forward, causing a huge explosion that blasted everyone out of his way. Ice Pillar! Misty shouted, as Staryu and Starmie both fired their jets of water, while Politoed froze the water with Ice Beam, creating a flying pillar of ice. Ah! Ha! She spun around, wielding the sledgehammer and sending people flying. You punks are way out of your league! Geodude, go! Brock shouted, running beside the rock Pokemon. Mega Punch! Ha! Geodude slammed one of them with his stone fist and sent him flying, while Brock slammed another one across the face with his frying pan. Meryl, use Iron Tail! Tracy shouted, holding Meryl as the ball of its tail became hard as steel. Leaping forward, Meryl swung its tail like a flail and struck anyone who came close, while forcing others to keep their distance. I can't believe it! It's the Twerps! Jesse and James exclaimed, seeing Ash's group. What I can't believe is how much damage they're doing! Meowth exclaimed, panting slightly. Team Rocket was losing this battle, but the moment Ash and his friends joined in, the tides turned completely. They were literally smashing through their numbers, and there was no one who could compete with their strength and skill. Guys, I think we better run, because as soon as they finish fighting the gang, it'll probably be us next! You're right! Team Rocket is taking off again! The three of them shouted as they, along with the grunts, ran off. As they ran, James's voice could be heard. But what are we gonna tell the boss? <coughs> There's just no end to these guys! Brock growled as sweat poured down the side of his face. Even with the numbers they'd taken down, they were still outnumbered greatly. <laughs> he swung his frying pan again. More came charging, but Geodude tackled into them, throwing them all back. Worse than that, more and more of them are releasing their Pokémon, adding to the numbers! Even if they stood in line and politely let us knock them out, it'd take us forever to beat them! What's more, our opponents are human! We have to hold back on our attacks, or we may end up killing them! Tracy growled as Scyther slammed one of them in the head with the flat side of its blade-like talons being careful not to cut them. We can't hit with full strength, but there's too many to hold back. If we don't come up with a better strategy, we're not gonna last much longer, said Misty, as her water Pokemon attacked Rhyhorn, knocking it out. <laughs> Ash lifted a man over his head and threw him at the incoming group, while Pikachu leapt over his shoulder and took down a group of Pokemon with thunder. You hear that, Pikachu? he asked, as the two of them had listened to their friends. Even though we're strong enough to go on fighting, our friends are getting tired, he spoke. Out of the way! He kicked another guy and sent him flying. Misty's right. If we go on, our friends could be in danger. Maybe we should pull out for now and come back when we have a better strategy. What's that, you say? You're running away from small fries like this? A voice spoke. And here I was just starting to think you were tough. Thinking of backing down against these numbers, I'm disappointed in you, Ketchum! Another familiar voice called up. Huh? Ash, Misty, Brock, and Tracy turned around. Yeah! 
Many of the punks screamed, as they, along with their Pokémon, were sent flying in different directions, flung through the air like rag dolls. Those that weren't hit all gasped, suddenly freezing in place when they saw who'd done it. It's rude of you guys to start the party without us! Clef cracked his knuckles and slid on an iron gauntlet. Ground Zero! With all his strength, he struck the ground with his fist, creating a massive shockwave that sent anyone within 20 feet of him flying through the air. Anyone who wants to die, step forward now! In one hand, Bonsai unfurled a bladed war fan. Ha! Suddenly, he shot forward, quicker than the eye could see, darting left and right, swinging the bladed fan, and came to a full stop. Everyone he had darted past immediately collapsed to the ground, covered in many thin cuts. He then pulled out a small bag filled with some sort of powder and threw it in the air. Hmm! Quickly, he jumped up and opened a second fan, using them to scatter the dust over the attackers. Everyone who was hit by the powder gasped, immediately collapsing to the ground, struggling to breathe, unable to move. Don't bother trying to get up. You've been hit with poison I've extracted from special herbs. Don't worry, it isn't lethal. But don't expect to regain control of your body anytime soon. He took a fighting stance with both war fans, causing a lot of people to back away. Is there anyone still brave enough to fight me? Whoa! Ash and his friends gasped, seeing the fiend's incredible strength. And that, Ketchum, is how you instill fear over your enemies. The two of them looked at Ash and smirked. We're here to help you fight, as payment for pulling me out of the forest. We may be outlaws, but we ain't ingrates, said Cleft. Uh, yeah, Ash sweat dropped. The mere sight of these two notorious super fiends would have already been enough to scare away most of the gang. But seeing what they were capable of? Those punks were frozen in fear. Who, who are you kidding? One of the punks stepped forward, clutching a Pokeball. You think we're scared of you? Well, for someone who isn't afraid, your legs sure are shaking an awful lot, said Cleft. J Shut up! The punk tried to look tough, but was failing miserably. More than anything, along with all the others, he looked like he wanted to run away. Why would people who are obviously terrified of us still want to fight? asked Bonsai. Is it bravery that drives you to continue, or is it just the opposite? Could it be that you're all too scared of someone else to run away? That is correct, a voice spoke up. They are afraid of you, but even more so of their leader, and what will happen to them should they run. The person stepped through the crowd into the open. Ash, Misty, Bonsai, and Clef's eyes opened wide. Ah! Ash gasped, seeing the hooded figure. You! It sure has been a while. Doppelganger smiled wickedly. Hasn't it, Ketchum? Just as the battle seemed to have been won with the arrival of the two fiends assisting Ash, Doppelganger has returned, more malicious than ever before. And what of the leader of this gang? Who could instill enough fear into his own followers to make them fight such terrifying opponents? or Red Kaiser, whom even the fiend speaks so fearfully of.